patient profile. Name, Michael Dogan. Date of birth, July 25th, 1990. Address, 120 Jotsleib Street, Apartment E, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 15202. Phone number, 878-191. 0008 Case Summary The patient is a 28-year-old man recently diagnosed with pyromania. Prior to the diagnosis, he had no history of prescription medication. He presents to the pharmacy today with a new prescription for sertraline. History of Present Illness the patient was recently laid off from a welding firm and has experienced uncontrollable urges to set fires since then. He frequently uses candlelight in his apartment, plays with sparklers year-round, and sets small controlled fires on his dining room table. He sought treatment after a neighbor discovered him at his table burning a log one day and threatened to inform the landlord if he did not stop. Social history. Patient smoked for three years during his time at the welding firm, stopping two years ago. He does not drink. He lives in Pittsburgh, alone in his apartment. Currently, the patient is seeking new employment. He eats mostly home-cooked food, especially red meats, such as fried steak. His family is scattered across Pittsburgh. Family history. Patient's mother is alive and has type 2 diabetes. Patient's father is alive and in remission from pancreatic cancer. Patient's sister is alive and being treated for depression. Past medical history. No diagnoses or prescribed medications on record. New Rx, sertraline, 100 milligrams daily. Today's date, August 15th, 2018. End patient profile. Good morning. As you can see, Alice, utter devastation this morning after last night's fire. Four entire houses are completely incinerated. There are these four you can see back to my left, and they are utterly destroyed. Fortunately, no one was hurt. All four houses were empty at the time of the fire due to their families being on vacation. Not a happy thing for them to have to come home to. Authorities are puzzled by the nature of the fires. Although the fire department arrived on the scene and under the usual response time, the houses were already completely engulfed in flames. While the homes themselves are gone, there is little damage to the yard and surrounding property, leading authorities to believe that we're looking not at one accidental fire spreading to four homes, but four cases of controlled arson begun at exactly the same time. Police are opening an investigation and are asking any residents of the neighborhood with knowledge about the fires or knowledge of anything suspicious in the area to come forward. We are live in Allegheny, and I'm Boris Yeltsin, KDKA TV Morning News. Article in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, dated September 4th, 2018. What in blazes? Pittsburgh firebug strikes again. Another conflagration is added to the growing number of fires being set in the Pittsburgh city limits. An abandoned warehouse on the south side abruptly went up in flames yesterday around noon. Once again, firefighters arrived on the scene quickly but the building was too far gone to save. No one was hurt. Analysis of the fires indicates that the arsonist behind them is well trained in creating particularly hot and fast burning blazes. Traces of highly flammable materials such as magnesium have been found in high quantities at all of the burn sites. Authorities report they have plans to monitor sales of such products within city limits though some question how effective a tactic this will be. The fires started two weeks ago 
with the synchronized burning of four residences in the Allegheny area. Since then, fires with the same forensic traces have occurred in two fast food restaurants, three fitness centers, a Halloween party store, two gas stations, and now the former steel warehouse. Despite increasing attention from law enforcement, no culprit has been apprehended, and no leads have been reported. Three firefighters suffered intensive burns when attempting to put out the Halloween store fire, but otherwise, no injuries have been reported. Until progress of some kind is achieved, the citizens of Pittsburgh will live in apprehension, wondering where the next fire will strike. Article in the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, dated September 8, 2018. Firebug found. Authorities are reporting that the man known as the Pittsburgh Firebug is now in custody. A man fitting the description reported by witnesses after the warehouse burning was arrested Tuesday. Investigation revealed the man, Michael Dogan, was recently laid off from a welding firm and diagnosed with pyromania, a rare psychological condition where the sufferer has uncontrollable urges to burn things. A search of the man's apartment revealed numerous tools and agents useful in creating fires, including copious amounts of magnesium powder, a setup for the creation of thermite, plans for remote delivery of fire starter packs using drones, and more. Excerpt from recorded conversation between Officer McCohen and Michael Dogan during the latter's custody of Pittsburgh PD. No way you're getting out of this one. We've got everything we need to put you and your sicko fire obsession away for a very long time. I'm sure that you think so. Aren't you listening? We have means. We have motive. We have opportunity. You've been placed at the warehouse at the time of the fire, and nobody can alibi you. Do you know what that means? It means you will probably convict me. Yes. Yes, it does. And once convicted, you know where you're going. Not specifically, but I'm assuming Western Penitentiary. Western? No, no, they, they closed that one down. Oh, but that's exactly the kind of place you're headed. You won't be coming back from there for years. If we can peg you on any of the other fires, you'll never walk outside those walls again. It's a setback, I'll admit, but not an insurmountable one. Did you just confess? I admitted that being locked away in a state prison will be quite the postponement in my plans. Nothing more. You, you don't care? No, I care. But you seem quite determined to make my incarceration happen. That's why I'm representing myself. Why waste a lawyer's time? <laughs> why indeed. For a firebug, you sure have a whacked up code. I am not a firebug. <laughs> Come on, what else would you call it? You mean if we were speaking of me hypothetically being hypothetical my psychiatrist's gouty toe, you're the guy. Uh, hypothetically being the perpetrator of the numerous fires in this city, then I would probably assume that my supposed motivation was not just simple desire to see things burn. Oh yeah? What, it inspires you religiously or something? You scoff. But again, hypothetically speaking, that may be closer to this postulated truth than you might think. <sighs> uh-huh. Too bad we spoiled your big finale, eh? To what finale do you refer? We found your plans. We know what you were planning on hitting next. I've got to admit, it's bold. Psychopathic and without a shred of decency, but you got chutzpah. You wouldn't have made it, of course. Again, to what finale do you... Steel Tower. You know, the skyscraper you wanted to blow up. Are you that delusional that you think you could smuggle highly flammable incendiaries and some plastic explosives up to the top floors by yourself and no one would catch on? You're nuttier than my sister's therapist, and that guy dresses up as a giant panda to go on dates. And 
interesting scenario. Why do you suppose that I would plan to do this? Eh, beats me. You're a nut. You said you had motive. We've got you for a script for sertraline, 100 milligrams, specifically prescribed for pyromania. Sounds good to me. <laughs> What's so funny? Ah, uh, nothing. I just remembered a story about a hamster stuck in a wheel trying to reach the food that's outside. It always makes me laugh. Huh. Would you like a wheel in your cell? I might be able to arrange a little spinning for you. Oh, I'm not the hamster officer. You are. You trying to be funny? Not particularly. Then what is your game? Seriously, Gumbo, you're just wasting our time now. Say you did it, and maybe, just maybe, the judge will give you a chance at getting out when you're 65. I will be out long before then. Sure, sure you will. That and a buck will get you a Twix. Where are you buying these Twix bars? That's cheap. Doesn't matter, though. I'll be out soon. And what makes you think that? I have things to finish. Tower combusting things? Do you really expect me to say yes to that, officer? Might help you in the long run. In the long run, there is no help for any of us, officer. Okay, Mr. Nihilistic Firebug, I think that's enough for now. Thanks. Guess I'll see you in the courtroom. The trial is expected to be held on September 21st. Michael Dogan, despite the overwhelming evidence against him, still pleads not guilty. A motion by Officer McCullen to have the audio recording admitted as a tacit confession failed. Despite Dogan's assurances that he did in fact waive his right to a lawyer, McCohen is being reprimanded for misconduct. The city of Pittsburgh waits impatiently for the outcome of the trial. Michael Dogan, on the other hand, remains completely unconcerned. He knows what his future holds, and it isn't bars and an orange jumpsuit. There will be plenty of orange, however and red, and black, the triumvirate of flaming shades that have colored the rims of his irises since he left his job as a welder, and found something so much more fulfilling.